If the people around you aren't lifting you up and helping you, find different people. I'll echo that. You're in charge of your own destiny. Hey, it's Brett Chittum with CMWR, and I'm here with... Jason Slago, CMWR. Oh, it's a thing. We're, we're back again. It's Tuesday again. Yeah, and this is business technicalities. Um, you, we were talking this morning, and it, mindset, that seems to be the thought of the day and don't mind me i just had dental work done so i'm still a little numb my tongue's a little thick i might slur my words yeah not to be confirmed with numb skull will there be other numb skulls there numb skull that's me too yeah. uh no it's uh i figured we'd take a break this week from uh some of the direct merger related stuff probably mm. get back to that next week uh when i'll be in vegas when we record most likely uh, oh probably not happening at 9 a.m next week because it'll be 6 a.m in vegas we'll figure uh, it out we'll yeah. figure it out yeah uh i'll be there for channel con so if anyone mm -hmm. is there that's watching this feel free to stop and say hello i am gonna make it a dry event and not going to drink there uh you're doing good at that which is gonna be really hard uh but uh, I have to prove to myself as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, part of my journey of uh, weight loss, I'm down below uh, 270 now trended. That's so, awesome. Uh, I'm doing good. And part of that journey is uh, showing myself I can get through an event without drinking so that I can drink, but I can drink in moderation mm -hmm. because it's a it's a crutch like people don't necessarily realize it and this is mindset so it's kind of related i'm actually an introvert and uh a lot of times uh i drink at events to socialize so uh that that's a that's a thing but mindset uh this is related to the merger right because obviously uh we've been busy and uh, mindset plays a big part into that uh, this is another one of those ones where normally i make three or four bullet points that we want to cover i did not we're just going to kind of ramble through this for a little bit of time and talk about mindset and what we do each of us yeah. do to keep ourselves sane uh and uh happy and, and run through things and you know not murdering each other our employees <laughs> or our customers yeah uh, so yeah well, you know, I, I was it was funny because you and I had a conversation. I have an issue going on with one of my kids, and I uh, I, I was I was telling you, hey, there's going to be a day I can't be here. And you're like, what? What happened? One of the things I'm a firm believer in is you can truly separate business mm -hmm. from personal, and it's about mindset, right? What is, what is your mind thinking at that moment, and what how are you setting it for success? Um, there's a lot of crap going on with this one child of mine and, 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 um, you know, I love my kids and, but with this merger, nothing could affect what the merger had to be and what had to happen. And so I had to set my mind to say, I have these things I need to do in my role yep. to make sure that things continue to happen. And it, it, no matter what was going on in my personal life, yeah, and you've done, I think you've done a fairly good job of that. I, I'm a little bit different. Uh, I, when I'm stressed out in my personal life, I will often lean into my work life mm -hmm. to uh, kind of pick me up because uh, it's in control and I can make good things happen there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of use, uh, I've got three things, tenants going on right now. You know, one is my weight loss, mm -hmm. fitness journey, uh, then work, then mm -hmm. personal. And as long as all three of them aren't on fire at once, <laughs> I can usually manage. Uh, <laughs> I've had a couple of weeks recently where all three have been on fire at once and it's been a really stressful, tough time time for me uh but i think that uh things are things are going okay uh so what do you do to uh clear your head and, and to keep your mind in the right spot to make sure that you know you're not letting uh head trash bog you down um my biggest thing is my drive anytime i'm heading somewhere where i need to be in the right mindset i listen to a podcast that might talk about the situation i'm going into or a good one. for for me, and I turn it up as loud as it can be. I I because I I am a I have that ADHD to the infinite degree, and squirrels happen. Yeah, there's birds out there. Yeah, look at <laughs> and and so I have to totally focus. And for me, I can't hear anything else. Like road noise will distract me. Yeah. So when I listen to a podcast, it's up as high as it almost as high as it can be. Um, reading. For me, and not just books, 
I like to read news and uh, either online or actually in, in paper form. And I will read a paper from start to finish. Yeah, I need to get back into reading. I read a lot, but it's a lot on the computer and it's a lot of technical stuff, uh, I audiobook stuff. But mm -hmm. like recently, I think for the past like nine months, everything I've read or uh, or listened to has been uh, essentially uh work related in some mm -hmm. way or another and that's starting to drive me crazy so i need to get back on the personal reading train and find some I, i'm a sci fantasy nerd mm -hmm. so i need to find some good sci fantasy to read well i mean so you were saying you you kind of lean towards bearing yourself at work yep i think i think a lot of it, i do that i think that's yeah. part of why i have to do that and, and segregate because um it's 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 important. Work is your function, right? You yep. own a business, Jason. So you reading books, I mean, Don't believe it or not, me. you reading books on business is also about personal thought too. It is, it is, but uh, it, I have a hard time. I have also ADHD, undiagnosed, <laughs> untreated oh, yeah. my entire life. Uh, and I know I have it. Uh, I've managed to get through it. I often wonder if I went and, and got diagnosed and, and got some medication, if I would actually be more effective or if it would kill the unique squirreliness that makes me do what I do well. Uh, but I there are thoughts around that. <laughs> yeah, it it. Uh, well, right now, I think the squirreliness is helping us. I think long term it, mm -hmm. it hurts us. But when you've got a merger going on and there's like literally 18,000 tasks a day coming at you, the squirreliness is mm -hmm. maybe not a terrible thing. Uh, but yes, it burns you out after a while. Right. So like part of the mindset, and I think, I don't know if we recorded an episode on this or if it's still in our ideas list, but, uh, burnout is a very, very yep. real thing. And, uh, I took, uh, three days off at the end of last week, uh, two of which I ended up spending, uh, going out to see my personal trainer, mm -hmm. uh, who's actually from Belfast, Ireland and happened to be in Pittsburgh, uh, and one of which I spent at a geocaching event that I've attended, <laughs> you know, it was the 19th one. We missed one for COVID. So it was technically the 18th time right. we'd gotten together. And, uh, well, no, it was the 19th time we'd gotten together starting in 2005 and I've been to every one of them. Yeah. Uh, and mean. that time I was still available on Slack mostly, uh, on Thursday when I was at the gym, not so much, mm -hmm. but, uh, I took that time to decompress and, and I felt bad and I felt guilty because of how much stuff's going on. But at the same time, there's only so many hours or days you can run at a hundred to 110% and, and not burn yourself into the ground and uh, completely withdraw and burn out. So taking that time to uh, step away mm -hmm. for a day or two and reset yourself, reset expectations, uh, I actually think is really important. Yeah. Well, I think it helps to, you know, help you remain effective, right? Yeah. I mean, effectiveness is, is an important thing because if you're not effective in what you are doing in this merger, things can go to <laughs> crap man. and, 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 you know, hell in a handbasket, like right away. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that I think about that helps you in your mindset are processes, right? Yeah. And I think processes help you, you, you know, really control what is going to happen in whatever instance you have. So not that you can process it and develop a process for everything, yeah. but at least getting you, you set that first thing in the morning, here's my daily process. I've got to do these things every day. Yeah. I, that's, that helps me in mindset too. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing that to a certain extent. Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I have a protein shake for breakfast every morning. I get up, mm -hmm. I have a protein shake. Uh, I drive in, uh, usually I'll call somebody on the way in. I'm for better or worse, a big believer of not wasting the time you're spend driving. Right. So I usually call somebody and talk about something. If I'm not, uh, calling to talking to somebody, I'll listen to a podcast. Mm -hmm. I tend to not do music in the car. Uh, I mean, I will, but my wife hates one of the, she's listening to my podcast <laughs> in the car. So when she's in the car, it's almost always music. Oh uh, man, that's but, funny. You know, that's time that I otherwise would be downtime and wasted. So if you can spend, it's my commute's only 15 minutes. If you, but that's 15, it's 30 mm -hmm. minutes a day of, you know, betterment, right? That right. I can get, uh, uh, which has actually been pretty good. 
I have a thing that I'm going to share my screen here if I can figure out how to do it. So this is a thing I've leaned into a couple of times, uh, uh, which is this, this comes as part of my, uh, it comes as part of my trainer, right? So I mm -hmm. use a personal trainer as, as I said, he's out of, uh, he's out of Belfast, uh, and, uh, I've, I've gone to this, he's got some on-demand stuff and then he does it live several times a day and it's five minutes of breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. It's five minutes of meditation and then <clears throat> five minutes of gratitude journaling. And, uh, oh. I find when I do it, that it really grounds me. He also occasionally does, uh, we did one on Friday or Thursday at the Airbnb in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. He did like a 45 minute breathing session. And I'll tell you what, if you've never done anything, it's like a uh, Wim Hall, I think is the name of it. It's like a mountain climbing breathing exercise. It is insane. Uh, While just sitting there? Yeah, you just, it's 45 minutes of guided breathing and like you're, for lack of a better word, high at <laughs> uh, about in the middle of it because you are hype, uh, hyper oxygenated. It's really deep breaths quickly right. in and out of your mouth. So you're like, your blood is, is just absolutely overflowing with, uh, uh, with the oxygen and it's kind of mm -hmm. crazy uh i'll go ahead and end the share now it's kind of crazy uh how how it works but it's been one of those things that uh mindset in in meditation wise uh i find that when i meditate and i journal which is a habit i'm mm -hmm. i need to get back into more consistently uh that i am more patient uh less reactive and just generally feel better right. about myself well i am um through the journey with with my one child um went through some things and went through went through a lot of reading and it, it's weird how it comes down to two simple things you're either at a heart of peace or a heart of war in whatever you're doing yeah right yeah i mean you either have peace in it or you have war in it and and it's an interesting concept not that we're trained in any, in any way, shape, or form no. in any of this philosophical shit, but I can't even say that word right with my, <laughs> my tongue. Is. But um, I think presenting and, and yourself as yourself in, in, in that aspect, what where are you at peace in what's going on? Are you at war? In between is a dangerous thing, right? Yeah. And so um knowing that you know what you're doing and if you look up hard at peace and hard at war you'll find what we're I, actually i can say it the anasazi foundation yeah. uh it would be really interesting i think uh with that to like list the like major four or five facets of your life with just a daily tracker and just mm -hmm. have peace and war and just every day mark on them what they are yeah right. what a, what an interesting idea we could put that in our leadership thing we could you know i'm at peace with our leadership team right now mm -hmm. uh it's the meetings have been pretty good since the merger uh they were we had some uh i've spent the last uh handful of years with some pretty contentious leadership team meetings mm -hmm. uh i think some of it comes down to one particular employee that's uh has moved on and uh the causing some strife just because mm -hmm. we weren't all necessarily swimming exactly in the same direction. And, uh, it's been, it's been a breath of relief. Like my kids from our leadership team meetings during COVID, uh, they know how to use the F word in <laughs> is every form of speech because we're all trapped in a house together. And it's like, uh, my, my wife would come down she'd be working in the she i work in the office downstairs she works in a spare bedroom <laughs> and she would come down and go did anyone cry on today's meeting because man oh man you were pretty brutal and uh i yeah that was that was the time when i would say i was at war and now i'm definitely i think for the moment at peace I, I being a part of those meetings i couldn't imagine you pissed off in a meeting like that I, how, oh yeah uh, you'll I, you'll see it at some point i promise i hope not I mean, I hope I'm doing what I need. Don't don't direct it at me. I hope. I no, mean, it'll be it's directed at everyone over time, mm -hmm. right? It's like uh, we all drop ball. I drop balls. I drop all sorts of balls. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, part of my thing has been delegating. Well, it's the traction thing. Delegate mm -hmm. and elevate, right? right. It's like uh, uh, I've been taking a more mindful approach to try to be more strategic in the business. Strategic doesn't necessarily mean I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It just means that like uh, uh, freeing up my time from the day to day tech and right. operational stuff to like, for instance, 
spend multiple days building agreements for the the former Lawrence clients that are now yeah. part of CWR. And uh, I want to make sure they're done correctly. So I'm doing them all myself. And it's not really, I don't know <laughs> if it's a great use of my time, but I understand manage better than anyone here on the billing side. So it is right. very important to me. I'll, I'll get through them and I'll document the process. And then after we're done, somebody else can do them. Uh, but yeah. being able to focus on things like that and making sure the billing's correct and making sure the customers are getting taken care of, right? Like, uh, right now, that's a better use of my time than uh, doing technical stuff, right? Yeah. So, like, freeing myself up and delegating a stuff. I've delegated a whole metric crap ton of stuff down to Matt, and uh, I he, he's overwhelmed a lot of days. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he he also is on that journey and needs to learn to delegate some of the stuff that he's taken down to right. the people below him, right? And, and, and when people do that, you know, I think he's up to... 13 direct reports, which we probably need to fix at some point. Yeah. He needs to learn to delegate to his employees right. below him too. And that's part of a, a, a journey. And that's a, that's a whole new topic of delegation because I've always found it hard because yeah. I always thought to myself, nobody can do what I do. That's not that, so, that's a bad, that's a bad thing. It is a very bad. Uh, so I have gone through my career. So for some history, <laughs> CNWR used to be Toledo Internet Access. Uh, it was formed in 1995. Uh, Alan sold it, my business partner, that uh, is slowly where I'm buying him out over time. And he's he's our chairman of our board right now and, and handles finance, the finance role and the mm -hmm. HR role. Uh, uh, and I'm getting about half of his time a week, but, you know, he's 64, no, 65. He's, I have no idea. He's 65, was, I think. It was he's, great for his age. He's right? at retirement age, right? Whatever yeah. that number is. And uh, he is slowly winding down and doesn't know how much longer he wants to work. He wants to sail around on his giant 48-foot boat uh, and sail off into the sunset. And uh, <laughs> Wouldn't you? So he ran the business you know, from 95 until about three years ago. Uh, and he when we sold the business, the ISP to a company that CNWR ended up maintaining basically the consulting piece of it and sold the ISP. I worked for the ISP for a while and uh, it became untenable. Uh, mm -hmm. The new owner, he had a very manufacturing mindset, right? So it's like they were giving me crap about, I'm not a timely person. They'd give me crap for being 15 minutes late every day. And uh, finally, uh, they're making me punch a clock. Finally, I told them like, okay, I will be in it. I promise you I'm in it nine every day, but when five o'clock comes from on the phone, I'm going to hang up and leave. Right. Like, and don't, mm -hmm. and don't ask me to work overnight. Right. Because I'm, uh, I, and that's a shitty toxic mindset, right? Yeah, like, but, but you know, you, you know, you're 20, you're 19, right? Like I think that was 2002. So I was 22, I guess at the time. Uh, and you know, that's, while that's a toxic mindset, it's also, uh, it, it's just why I'm not a good employee and why I don't work well in corporate America. Where was I even going with this story? Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that, well, toxic uh, mindset, we're on mindset. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where oh, you no, were going. I know where we're going. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I quit, right? Like, uh, yeah, I was, I was working on my CCIE. Uh, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't pay for the, uh, travel or the materials for me to do it. They just refused to pay for it. And so mm -hmm. I had taken a part-time job at UT as a lab assistant, uh, where I was actually a lab assist, uh, I was a lab instructor for Brett Cheloff from Zorus, yeah. among others. I think, uh, a couple other people of MSP fame have gone through that program, uh, because lab tech was born here in Toledo when I quit. I thought the whole world was going to come crashing down around them, that no one could do what I did. And guess what? It survived. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, at some point or another, you have to get over the fact that no one is irreplaceable. You know, did it hurt mm -hmm. them? Yeah. A hundred percent. It hurt. It hurt a bit. And, uh, but that's a huge part of delegation is right. realizing that, uh, it, yeah, I, it's hard to replace me in many cases, and there are definitely technical things around here that I'm 100% the only guy that can do, right? But for every one of those that exists, it's a call on vacation. Right. Yeah. So mindset-wise, you get over that. Well, and I, I did in, in this aspect. So, you know, I was leading the sales charge at, at Lawrence yep. and actually the day-to-day -day stuff and coming here and, and taking a little bit more um, – extended role 
I've had to delegate some of the sales aspects to the account managers right now because we're yep. looking for a salesperson. Yep. And that was hard to do. But but guess what? Nothing's broken yet. Yeah, it will. There'll be bumps. Yeah. Uh, well, there'll be trying times. We'll work through them, right? Like that's part of uh, that's part of growth, right? right. Like uh, uh, people learn by making mistakes. Right. Oh, I agree. Uh, my son, I uh, rode my wife's road bike for 10 miles. His first 10 mile ride that he's ever done. Uh, he got on my wife's road bike yesterday, which is probably about two inches too tall for him. He gets his <laughs> feet on this on the he can stand over the bar, but his feet when he's on the seat would just barely br brush his tiptoes. He yep. had to lean to put his foot down. I asked him 20 times, are you comfortable with this? And uh, he's a scout, right? He's working on a cycling merit badge. And, you know, at some point or another, you you have to take the training wheels right. off and you have to stop saying, well, no, I'm not going to let you do that. Right. And you have to let people sink or swim on the decisions they make and learn from their mistakes mm -hmm. in a safe, supported environment. Right. So that happens. Yeah, what else we got? I think we're at 21, so. Probably. I mean, mine's, I mean, for everybody, you're, you're, how you get and set your mind to, to doing a task you need to do is going to be up to you. Find what works. For, for Jason, It's he's got those three different things he's, he does. He's I'm doing great at working out. For me, I'm yelling at having podcasts yell at me. Um, and for you, it might be reading, it might be going and playing clicker games. That's yeah. one thing, you know, it might be, but what gets you back into the mindset you need to be in to be successful? Yep. And that's the important part. Yeah. Why don't people comment with any tips or trips they, they have about, you know, resetting their mindset? Cause I'm always, always looking for uh, mm -hmm. new things to try or to do. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Final thoughts. I get to say it today. Final thoughts. Um, I success is, is determined by you, not by the people around you. I, I truly believe that you can't be successful unless you feel it. The people around you will assist you, but yeah. if the people around you aren't lifting you up and helping you yeah. find different people. Yeah, I, I, I'll echo that. You're in charge of your own destiny, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, don't assume you're owed anything. Don't assume you're not owed anything. Don't assume anything along those lines. Just do what mm -hmm. moves you forward and make the best decisions for yourself and keep your mind out of the, the trash, right? Like, yeah. uh, do get the, get that mind trash out of there. Get that imposter syndrome out of there, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, cool. Like and subscribe. Yeah, hit the little thingy, the bell. Yeah, I think we're supposed to say that contractually with YouTube or they like come over here and hit us with a play button. <laughs> yeah. So, All right. Okay. Hey, have a good one, guys. Right. Until next week. See you later.